G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. And today we're taking a look at RDAV's Auto Miner script. And this is an incredible script that allows us to set up an automated mining ship in space that will completely obliterate any asteroid that you set it to and will then deliver that ore straight back home all without input from the player once you've got it set up. The first thing we want to do, particularly if you're playing in survival, is probably load up a creative mode game. And what I've got here is a survival mode game with enable creative mode tools on. Then hit F10, search for RDAV, grab his auto minus script blueprint, and then click paste. Once that's pasted in, we can go to the programmable block on board, right click on it, click edit, and then click browse workshop. What you want to do now is click create from editor. When you do that, it will create a new script that's local to your PC. And then you could rename that, and I already have renamed one to RDAV's AI Auto Miner. And now that that's done, it will make it very easy for us to set up another ship to use this script. To walk through this script, I'm going to be building a very dodgy, but somewhat effective mining ship that can use this script. We'll start with a medium cargo container and then we'll place a conveyor junction on this. The script is incredibly flexible. It can use a connector on the top, sides or bottom, doesn't really matter. I'm going to pop one on the what's going to eventually be what I think of as the bottom of this. Then what we need to do is add in our remote control block and our programmable block. And I'm going to add the programmable block really early so that we can see some of the error messages that it'll throw up as we go through. Next off, let's add in a reactor here and here. Then I'm going to use my little cheat creative menu, Shift F10, spawn into targeted container. Now we've got power on board and same again for this one. And then so that these will eventually be connected to a conveyor system, let's chuck the conveyor in between. Now, let's hop into our programmable block. We'll click Edit, Browse Workshop, and then we've got our script that we loaded before. Click OK, check code, OK, remember an exit. Same as usual. And now we start seeing that it's running, and it'll tell us what we need to fix. So there is no sensor found. So let's put a sensor on. We'll pop it, yeah, that'll work. And now, when we click recompile, it'll tell us our next error. No gyro found. That's something I could really use a hand on sometimes, because it is a block I often forget. And now, if we recompile again, it'll just keep telling us each thing that it's missing. Now, it won't tell us everything that we're missing, so let's finish this ship off a bit more so that we at least know that it looks like a mining ship. When we're setting up our drills, we need to make sure that if they're using the primary drilling method, as in the equivalent of the left click drill method, they will drill out enough space for the ship in a tunnel, because this is going to drill through the asteroid in a tunnel, and it'll do repeated runs back and forth through the asteroid until the asteroid is completely depleted. So we need to make sure that these drills will create a big enough hole. So I'm going to place two of them like that, and then what we're going to do is start placing a few thrusters. For something of this sort of size when I'm flying it, what I would normally have is probably three or more thrusters on each side, so let's do that. Three there. They should be relatively safe. That might scrape a little bit. Now let's recompile the script and see what it's telling us about what's going on. Large amount of thrusters detected. Program terminated to prevent performance issues. So this is important to note that if you're building a very large ship, you should probably use large thrusters to keep the script being efficient. What you can do is go to line 56. So if we go down here and we find line 56, which is somewhere. So if we toggle this to false, Check code, okay, remember an exit. It'll now just say that it can't find a docking route. We're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we are going to leave that to true. 
because I'm in single player, I could probably get away with this, but let's deal with the vanilla version of the script. So 15 maximum. So let's drop us down to two in each direction, which will leave us with 12 thrusters. We've now got two in each direction. Recompile. And now it's just saying that it can't find a docking route. There is one more thing I would strongly recommend setting up on an auto miner, and that is sorters and ejectors for getting rid of all of the stone. This is going to drill the whole way through every asteroid, so it is going to create a lot of excess stone. And what I'm going to do here is just place a few of these along each side and we'll just eject the stone as we go. Remember when placing ejectors, you want them to be clear of any of your own blocks as they will do damage. So you don't want anything around that nozzle. Now let's set up our ejectors and so that we can easily access this ship later, let's add an antenna to the build. When I'm setting up ejectors for mining ships, I tend to set up a whitelist for stone. We now have those ejectors set up, so they'll be ditching the stone as we go, hopefully fast enough, probably be close enough. Let's set up the final thing we need for this script, which is to lock it onto this connector. And we can roughly see what's going on there, so let's shift K, control. And let's land. It's important to note that the direction you have this facing when it's locked onto the connector is the direction that it will fly away from the connector when it launches to go mine. And if you've got structures that might get in the way, you probably want to have it facing a sensible direction. So now the script is saying no asteroid input. And to get asteroid input, what we need to do is find a local asteroid, because we don't want to have this thing flying too far, but find a local asteroid that's got the minerals we're after, and then set up a GPS marker for it. I have one GPS marker 11 kilometers away, I've got another one down here that's 8 kilometers away, and the first one I'm going to demonstrate is actually this one underneath. When you've found an asteroid that's got the resources you're looking for, you can set up a GPS marker and set it up outside the asteroid. You don't want it inside because what the script does is direct the ship to get to this GPS marker and then start mining from this point. If it's inside the asteroid, it may end up crashing en route to this marker, which is definitely not what we want. So we set it up outside, and if there's a particular resource you want it to collect first, make sure you set up the marker over that resource so that it will hopefully mine that first as this is a little tip that is noted in the script. Let's hop back to our base and then we'll start setting up this marker to be the marker for our ship. If we go again into the terminal for the ship, go to our programmable block and now what we need to do is in the custom data we need to put the GPS in here. Also note there are a collection of hints and tips here for the script. Look in the terminal for live mining progress. You can read all these yourself, but they are very useful. So what we want to do is go to our GPS. And we're going to select this asteroid under. Now I'm deliberately choosing a bad GPS marker here. We click copy to clipboard, go back to our control panel, go back to our custom data, highlight the information between the two at symbols, and then press Ctrl V to paste in our GPS marker. Click OK, and now we get disconnected from the terminal because the ship is going to start mining. And hopefully I can grab it in time to show you. This is all the information we can see about what it's doing. Now, you can see a problem we've got already. Because that marker is underneath this asteroid, this ship is going to have all sorts of problems getting there. So we really don't want that, and it's going to start mining our base as well, which is not ideal. So what we're going to do instead is use a marker that is much easier for this ship to get to. We'll grab our asteroid marker, copy to clipboard, then we'll click Shift K, grab to our terminal, go to our programmable block, custom data, and even while it's running, we can just press Control V, OK. And now, it will readjust what it's doing. 
it's now going to head off to that asteroid. Easy as that. Now that the miner's reached the asteroid, let's have a look again at what it's showing in that programmable block. Here we go, outside asteroid, false, mining logic, has finished tunnel, false, so it's actually going to start drilling its tunnel out now. And you can see now it's moving very slowly, kind of the pace that you would ideally set for an auto miner that's tunnel boring through an asteroid. And you can see that our ejectors are creating a whole bunch of floating stone there. You can see now, even with this hole in the center, the mining ship will actually continue to go just as slow, which is good because there may be small voxels in the way and it will keep going until it gets right out the other side. When the mining ship is eventually full, it'll turn around and it'll head back to base and it'll dock in the orientation we set up the docking position in. Obviously, this might have some troubles if you're going to have enemy AI flying around. They may end up being nasty to your little ship. Right now, this script only works in space and only works for asteroids. You won't be able to use this on planets because of the difference in the way the ore is laid out on planets versus an asteroid. With the way that this script is set up where it divides an asteroid into grid squares and then mines them all out progressively, it's not going to really work on a planet. It's going to need a totally different approach. When I created the first docking position, I created the problem you're seeing in time-lapse right now. The way that the ship gets to its docking position that you create when you lock onto the connector is to approach it from a direct horizontal path and that needs to be a clear area. Unfortunately, my original docking position had the building in that zone that needs to be clear. So if we rotate the ship around when we create its docking position, it will actually be able to land quite easily and without any problems. But if there are any obstacles in the way of that particular part of its path, it's going to behave like the vanilla autopilot, which is to say it's going to be a pain in the backside. So if you're setting up your own approach path, make sure that the forward direction of your parking position is well and truly clear. It'll make everything run much more efficiently. One final thing we need to set up, now that the ship has docked back at our base, if we have a look in here, we go to our terminal, we go to our inventory of our ship, none of this is moving out of it. We've got all this cobalt, all this iron, and it is just sitting there. And the ship will sit there until those have been removed. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a sorter in to fix this problem. And I should be able to put one in right here. Pop it in that way around, and then, if we select this sorter, select whitelist, or add drain all. And now it'll pull all of that ore out of the ship, and then the ship can get back on its way. And there we go. It's nice and empty, and it'll head back to the asteroid, ready to keep mining. And if we have a look in here, we can see all of the goodies that the script has mined without any input from me apart from the bit where I stuffed up the exit pathway and I had to bump the ship into the right road, but otherwise completely without any input from me, which is just incredible. If the idea of having an auto mining ship producing all of this for you seems awesome, then make sure you head over to Ardav's channel and subscribe to him and follow him on the workshop. And if you can, support him on his Patreon. All of the links will be in the description and in the end cards, at least the ones I can put there. If you've got any of your own tips and tricks about the script, make sure you let me know in the comments because I'm hoping to use this in the future myself. As always, there is plenty more to come. So I'll see you then. <laughs>